Hi everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. As you know, one of the most expensive things about owning a car is the amount of money you spend at the gas pump, assuming you have a gasoline-powered car. So what can we do to reduce that cost and improve fuel efficiency and fuel economy so that we spend less money at the gas pump on the car that you already own or on the car that you're about to buy? Surprisingly, there are many, many things that we can do to dramatically improve the fuel efficiency so that hopefully you spend a little bit less money. And I want to explain to you about these things in a very practical way as an engineer. So let me give you 10 key factors that will help you improve your fuel efficiency and reduce the cost. Let's go. Welcome back. So I'm going to explain to you 10 ways you can dramatically improve your fuel efficiency improve your fuel economy and therefore save some money at the gas pump and you might be surprised with some of those things so in no particular order i'm going to explain these factors and if you can apply all of them or at least part of it you might be surprised at how much money you can save at the gas pump the first thing is to just remove all the things you don't need in a car the less weight the car has the more fuel efficient it's going to be obviously because weight will directly correlate to reduce fuel efficiency so for example this is my Land Cruiser. This is this week's car I have for Bronco. Since this car is not my car, it's completely empty. But this one, I'm always carrying some stuff around for fishing and other stuff. So you can tell I got a whole bunch of things here. And why do I have all these things? Well, probably just because I'm too lazy to organize and remove them from the car. So who knows, there could be a couple hundred pounds of unnecessary stuff in here and that will make your car heavier and therefore less fuel efficient uh, compared to just cleaning up your car, empty them things out, and that can really help with the fuel efficient. So obviously if you have more passengers in the car, that also add weight, but that's not something you can change. If you have to carry people, you have to carry people. But don't carry things that you don't need. So go over your car carefully and from the seat, from the roof, from the back, remove anything that you don't need. Uh, because once again, less weight means more fuel efficient. Now, it's not one of the most important factors though, but everything adds up. So I'm thinking that if I gave you 10 ways you can improve your fuel economy and each one of those factors can contribute to, let's say one to 2%, well, when you add them all up, it can be quite substantial. So the first thing anyway is to reduce weight, take anything you don't need. And that includes some semi-permanent things, like if you have a roof rack, or maybe even a roof carrier or a bike carrier in the back. You don't really need them that often. Take them out, make the car as light as possible. The second thing you can do is to try to streamline the vehicle so it doesn't have a huge amount of air drag. We want to improve the aerodynamic efficiency of these cars. And for things like SUV that we have right here, it's a difficult thing because we have so many things that can drag the air uh, for example, we got a big roof rack here. That's not good. We have on this uh, Bronco <laughs> all kinds of off-roading things, including a winch in the front. We have a snorkel over here. And generally speaking, larger tires and wheels that sticks out, especially on mine too, sticks out a little bit. They all um, reduce the aerodynamic efficiency and increase the air drag. And they will make uh, quite a bit of difference in highway speed. They will not make much of a difference in low speed, city driving kind of environment. But if you frequently drive on the highway, well, anything that can reduce the air drag will improve the fuel efficiency. So once again, either you know, semi-permanently remove roof racks that you don't need right away, or remove them altogether if you don't use them very often. Um, and unfortunately, if you buy something like a Bronco with all this stuff added on, it's not easy to remove them, but ideally you don't have these things on when you're normally driving on the highway day to day to improve the fuel efficiency through reduction of the air drag. So that's something else to keep in mind. What else can you do? Well, proper tune-up and maintaining your car is also important, not just for the purpose of trying to keep the car last as long as possible, but also properly maintained car does contribute quite a bit to the fuel efficiency. So whether you have a turbo four-cylinder engine with a hybrid like mine or turbocharged four-cylinder engine without the hybrid on the Ford Bronco that you see here. And of course, these two are new cars, but on the older cars, um, you gotta make sure that uh, you're keeping everything up to date in terms of tune-up, in terms of engine oil, all the stuff you have to do to make sure that they're in tip-top shape. As I mentioned before in some of my previous video, if you really want to make these cars last a long time and be at the top, top condition, make sure that you take everything in your owner's manual and maybe take the mileage and half it so that you change your oil and so forth more frequent than what's suggested in the owner's manual. 
that will also ensure that uh, the engine and the power train is kept in tip-top condition, which will give you the maximum fuel efficiency. Now keep in mind on the newer cars, it might not make a huge difference because these are already running at uh, peak condition. But if you have an older car, it really does make a difference because on the many of the older models, if you neglect the maintenance, then they do drag down the fuel efficiency. So that's something to keep in mind. Follow your manual at the very least, but ideally maybe change some of the fluid twice as often as what's suggested in the manual and make sure that everything is up to date. I'll talk about the tires and all that a little bit later on as well. The next point might be the most important one and that is to do with your driving manner or driving habit. If you're the type of person that likes to drive hard, you step on the gas, then you stop and you accelerate again, well, that can have substantial impact on the actual fuel efficiency. So take it easy in terms of how you drive, especially stepping on the gas hard uh, or stopping and going again. If you like to drive really aggressively, well, that's okay if you enjoy the car, but you just have to remember that it will impact the fuel efficiency quite a bit. In fact, I estimate anywhere from 10 to 50% of the fuel efficiency can be either gained or lost based on how you drive. So if you really drive aggressively and you like to step on the gas full throttle or close to full throttle, well, you're gonna have to just remember that you can eat up quite a bit more fuel than if you just drive normally. Now, I'm not asking you to drive like your grandma and just don't enjoy your car because obviously we all love cars and we buy our cars for driving enjoyment for most of us anyway. So it means that you have every right to drive the way you want. But if you do want to maximize the fuel efficiency and not waste uh, money on gas, then just take it easy a little bit or minimize the time when you want to drive aggressively uh, so that you don't impact the fuel economy. I think most people don't realize how much of a factor this is. And I would say of all the things I explained to you right now, the driving character and driving mannerism probably have the most significant impact on the fuel efficiency and therefore it's the most important one. And it's also one of the few factors where you have a direct control over the outcome because it's all based on how you drive and therefore you can either increase or decrease the fuel efficiency 10-50% uh, by changing the way you drive. So keep that in mind. The fifth one is an easy one to do, but maybe a little bit difficult depending on where you live. Because if you're in a warm country, maybe you can't turn off air conditioning, but if you can, try to reduce your dependency on air conditioning because that does sap additional energy from the powertrain and the car will end up using more fuel as a result. So if you're driving, for example, in a kind of mild climate, it's not super hot, maybe roll down the window just a little bit, not too much because that will also uh, reduce the uh, aerodynamic efficiency but open a little bit of window, maybe a sunroof or so, and maybe run the HVAC without using the air conditioning. So you can manually turn off the AC in most cars and just maybe uh, increase the fan speed. So you're running a cool air from outside, but not actually turning on the air conditioning. And believe it or not, that can contribute anywhere from kind of one to 3% of a fuel efficiency. And even if you're driving an electric car, if you turn off the AC, it increases the range by five to 10%. So those are some of the significant numbers and that result from using AC versus not using one. The sixth one is a bit tricky to figure out because it is to do with the type of gasoline you use. So for example, this Ford Bronco only requires a regular gasoline, which is 87 octane rating. But on the Land Cruiser, it is saying that I require premium gasoline. So that means it's 91 or higher. And of course, there are some gasoline that is available as 89, which is kind of mid-grade, halfway through to premium fuel. So depending on which one you use, what happens is that your power, your torque, and your fuel efficiency all changes a little bit. If you use a premium fuel as intended, or even using premium on a car that does not require premium, like on the Ford Bronco, what happens is that there's a little bit more power, a little bit more torque, and a little bit better fuel efficiency. And part of that is simply because when you have a little bit more power and torque, you can back off on the accelerator, and therefore you're using less fuel but generally speaking, higher octane rating will give you not just a little bit more torque and power, but usually and just a little bit more fuel efficiency. And you have to figure out based on calculation of the how much gas cost in your local area to determine whether a premium fuel will pay off based on the amount of uh, fuel efficiency you gain. I suspect it could be sort of one to 2% maximum that you gain in terms of fuel efficiency by using a premium versus non-premium. So calculate that, 
uh, against the cost of the gasoline that's more expensive and you can figure out whether it's worth paying premium uh, versus regular gas. And I just want to clarify one more time that if your manufacturer is recommending a premium like it is right here, you can put a regular gasoline, 87 octane rating, and the car will run just fine because the engine have all kinds of uh, computer sensors and so forth that will adjust itself to a lower octane rating. Uh, the reason why manufacturers recommend a premium, let's say, and they ask you to do that is because that's when you get the maximum power and torque and they want to, be able to advertise the car as having that amount of power and torque. And if you don't use premium or you don't require premium, then the power and torque will come down and therefore that's the number they have to use. And that's the reason why some manufacturers require premium fuel. But like I said, if you have a regular car that only requires a regular gas, but you put premium, you'll get a little bit better fuel efficiency as well. The seventh one is a very important one, especially if you have an SUV like this and you want to upgrade the wheels and tires, as I have done on my Land Cruiser. You can tell, for example, on this Ford Bronco, there's a, a package where you can get really, really big tires. We have mud tires, huge, huge uh, Goodyear tires on this one. But even on my Land Cruiser, I upgraded and there's quite a bit of poke over here and not everyone's gonna like that, I know that. And I know I'm sure that some of you guys will comment on it, but I have a particular reason for doing it this way. Um, but anyhow, I chose to buy a bigger wheels and tire package that pokes out a little bit and it gives a great stance and great design. But doing these kind of upgrades will eat up more gas, a lot more than you might think. And so you might want to think twice about putting big off-road tires, wide tires, especially if they poke out a little bit because they all contribute to worse fuel efficiency. And so if you were to compare like a regular street slash highway tire that came with this one, which is a Michelin LTX, compared to doing something like this, this is a Falcon Wild Peak tires, I would suspect that my fuel efficiency has been affected by at least 5%, maybe even 6-7%, uh, depending on the type of driving I do. And so having these big wheels and tires are great for off-roading and they look great in terms of uh, design and look and feel, but they do impact the fuel efficiency. And so if you want to maximize fuel economy, don't go this way. Instead, you have to buy a normal street or highway tires with a very low rolling resistance type of tires that they use on electric cars and they will help you maximize fuel efficiency. Like I said, it could be up to five to even 10% if you choose a wrong type of tire. The next point is very similar to what I just talked about. It's all to do with tire. And this time it's about the tire pressure and the type of maintenance you do on a tire as well. So first of all, make sure that your tires are inflated to the recommended tire pressure that is usually located inside one of the doors. Uh, you can put a little bit higher up than that because a slightly higher tire pressure will improve the fuel efficiency as well. I wouldn't go more than two or three PSI higher than what's recommended. If you go too high in terms of tire pressure, it will affect your uh, driving character, but also it can prematurely wear out the tires as well. So um, whatever that's recommended in the vehicles, add maybe two to three PSI. That's probably the ideal tire pressure. And that will give you the maximum fuel efficiency. If you forget to check the tire pressure, especially in winter times when the temperature is colder and all the tire pressure goes down by a few PSI, you could be uh, wasting gas because the tires are not set at the correct optimal PSI and all of those things will add to the um, fuel efficiency factor. How much? It's hard to say, but if you compare it to, uh, let's say, a tire that's poorly maintained and has a wrong tire pressure, maybe it's five or six PSI lower than it's supposed to be compared to the optimal level of tire pressure, I would suspect one to 3% at the very least in terms of impact on fuel efficiency. So do check the tire pressure, but also if you have a tire that's worn out quite a bit, that will also make it worse because uh, the, the traction and actual friction that will be generated between tire and the road surfaces will also be affected. So don't drive cars with completely worn out tires. It's not safe to begin with, but it will also impact fuel efficiency. The ninth thing you should keep in mind in terms of increasing fuel efficiency is a type of driving environment you might choose. So for example, if you have a couple of paths between your home and your destination, and you decide to take the shortest route, but that shortest route uh, has, let's say, a gravel road and some bumpy roads and lots of ups and downs, well, your fuel economy will suffer versus taking a route that's a little bit longer maybe, but involves more highway drive with very little stops, well, that's gonna maximize your efficiency. So choose the type of road 
that will give you um, the best opportunity to improve the fuel economy versus always choosing the shortest one. And of course, given the choice, highway driving is always more preferred than city driving with lots of stop and go because highway driving will increase your fuel economy. Uh, not so much for hybrid cars. There's not as much difference in terms of fuel efficiency between city and highway driving if you have a, a good hybrid system like mini Toyota hybrid system. But on most other gasoline powered cars, there's a quite a bit of difference between highway fuel economy and city fuel economy as much as 20 to 30 percent or more. So you always want to choose the highway if that is possible in terms of taking a path from point A to point B. The 10th and the last one might surprise you because you might not think it impacts that much, but it is to do with the engine start-stop, which you can deactivate by pressing this button. So if I press that, it's off. Otherwise, as you guys know, when you come to a stop, the engine will temporarily stop and then restart again when you lift up the gas pedal and step on the gas. So right now it's not doing it because all the conditions are not met. Oh, actually it did. So the engine did stop. And then if I lift my foot off the gas, it'll start again. And I know that you might think this is a waste of time because most people don't like this system, but shockingly it impacts three to 5%. So it's no small number because what happens is that when you come to stop, especially at a long traffic light and then the engine stops, which it should do that now. There you go, engine stop. And you wait for maybe 30 seconds or maybe even a minute. Um, well, it's not using any gas. So it does make a quite a difference, especially in city driving where you're always stopping and going at the same time. I know that some of you guys are worried about this impact on the actual starter and also the whole system in general, but the technology has improved so much that you don't have to worry about wear and tear of the system. Uh, it's all taken care of by clever engineering, so you don't have to worry about that. So even though you might have a tendency to turn this off because it's just more pleasant that way, don't turn it off, especially if you're driving in city, uh, because that will give you additional 3 to 5% fuel economy and save you a little bit of money in, at the gas pump. So I gave you 10 different factors you can consider in terms of improving a fuel economy. There are going to be more, and actually there are more things I can suggest, but they're probably minor compared to the 10 things I talked about. Those are the most important ones. And also people ask me things like, can we add additives to the gasoline? Does that actually make a difference? Well, I don't really think so. Maybe some minor improvement, depending on the type of additive you use, but honestly, the cost of additive will not offset the saving in gas, so I wouldn't do that. Now also, ultimately, if your car is old and therefore just incapable of maximizing fuel efficiency, then you might want to just consider upgrading to newer models with a hybrid system. That's obviously the biggest impact because there's no way an older car that's non-hybrid can ever match the fuel efficiency of a newer car with a hybrid system. And you might even go all the way to having an electric car which doesn't use gas at all. Although there is still cost involved in topping up and charging the actual battery. So there's always costs associated with it. But if you go to EV, there's no gas to fill up. And you might have some other ideas that uh, could improve the fuel efficiency. If so, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to entertain those, some of those ideas. I hope this was helpful. And let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you want to know. Uh, but for now, if you can give me a thumbs up and make some comments, that would be appreciated. And if you haven't done so yet, would you kindly subscribe as well. Until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.